Hello friends, I'm Kim Passable, and if you work on antique or classic cars, there's a major myth that's been going around for as long as I can remember. You're going to want to watch this video to find out how not to grenade your engine. On a lot of recent revival videos, old cars that have been sitting around and maybe a little rusty or stuck and hard to get going, it seems to be, and for a long time has been, common practice to just tweak the dizzy a little bit, as it were, time it by ear, and just give it a little bit of advance. A cold, tired engine with maybe uh, washed down cylinders because it wasn't starting properly will benefit from a little bit of extra initial timing advance. It'll heat up the cylinders and uh, give it a lot more pop right at, uh, you know, right at cranking. But it can be incredibly dangerous to do that without thinking about the consequences. The old myth that you can time with a vacuum gauge or time by ear at idle are just false. Timing for maximum manifold vacuum sounds good. I've heard it a bunch of times. Oh yeah, put a vacuum gauge on there. No. It's a bad idea. So my experience is not with uh, the small block engines or V8s, it's actually with slant six engines. And they just love a good 10 or 12 degrees of advance at idle. They love it. If the distributor is designed from the factory to give you too much advance, then setting it uh, well beyond the factory specification, which in some cases on trucks is zero degrees of advance. The distributor will produce advance as you increase RPMs. There's also a, a vacuum pod on older distributors. Now we're talking vehicles that are probably pre-1975 and it's a different game so uh, be careful and just be aware that these are real issues. If you set the initial advance wrong that on the top end, and when I mean top end Wide open throttle is not probably the most dangerous because wide open throttle will only add mechanical advance. You'll have a maximum amount and you can probably measure it. Most distributors, most of the advance will come in at a measurable maybe 2000 RPM. So you can measure with an RPM gauge and a timing light. You can see what your maximum advances and make sure it's something safe for your engine or if you hear some ping dial it back a little bit. Where you'll really have danger is where you're cruising, running the engine at a modest RPM uh, but enough to bring in the mechanical advance so maybe 2000 RPM you're, you're cruising along in uh, you know the highway gear okay but your foot is light on the pedal, so the throttle plates are closed and you have high manifold vacuum because your engine's running pretty good. So it's sucking a lot of air and the throttle plates are kind of closed. You're building lots of manifold vacuum and there's a little vacuum pod on the side of the distributor. And what that's going to do, now those are adjustable in some cases or they're replaceable. You can change them out to your liking. But if you have no idea what's going on and you have 10 degrees of initial advance because that's what started and ran good at idle and then maybe you have as much as 24 or even 30 degrees of mechanical advance built into the distributor, you're now at 40 degrees before top dead center. I don't know if that means anything to you, but 40 degrees before top dead center is, a, is a, it's, you know, you're igniting your fuel charge inside the engine way too soon. And some engines might be tolerant to that depending on the bore and stroke and what kind of, if you're using super great race fuel, which you probably don't need if you knew how to adjust your timing properly. But at that cruising speed, when you have that high manifold vacuum and the vacuum pod pulls in a little more advanced to really get the fuel economy that the manufacturer was trying to get, you might add as much, no lie, I've seen it, as much as an additional 50 
15 degrees of advance. That would be 55 degrees before top dead center. And you are going to snap a connecting rod. It's too much pressure. Engines aren't meant to be run that way. And it's running 2000 RPM. It's spinning too fast to, to chug to a halt. And you're going to snap something. You're going to break something. And you can compensate with like high octane race fuel if you want to just dump cubic dollars into the motor. But if you know what you're doing, you need to go for maximum advance. You need to put a vacuum pump on the pod and then you need to dial back for initial timing. You can't trust the designations under the hood on 70s cars because if the distributor was replaced and something inside the internals is not the same as the factory specification, it could vary widely. Like I said, my information is on Slant 6 Mopars, but I have a, I've dealt inside the distributors of some 318s and 340s and 360s. The motors are the same, but based on the weight of the vehicle and the rear end gearing and the transmission, whether it's an automatic or a manual transmission, they made different distributors and they all look from the outside perfectly identical. They all bolt right in and they have tags on them that will tell you the build but those are difficult to reverse engineer. So uh, if that was interesting to you and you don't understand, but you want to know more, let me know. If you disagree and you still think that you know what you're doing and that the best way to do it is by ear or with a vacuum gauge, you better leave a comment telling me how I'm an idiot so that we can have it out. So they don't bring their antique and classic car to your shop where you're going to set them up for a critical failure. Thanks for watching. Something like that. I'm here to talk today about a major myth that will destroy the engine in your antique or classic car. If you're tuning your antique or classic car, there's one big myth about timing that you need to know. Make sure to watch this video so you don't make the mistake that grenades lots of old antique and classic car engines.